We're going to get back to the heart of God. We're going to be in Little Rock Saturday actually uh, teaching this. Uh, I'm not going to be doing the teaching. Uh, Brother Matt is. Uh, we're going over with him. Uh, he's going to be teaching this to a select few of the Cowboy Churches of Arkansas pastors uh, so that they can learn it. And then in the fall, we'll have a leadership gathering, and several of us pastors will be teaching different parts of the heart of God to the Cowboy Churches of Arkansas to try to get all of the churches under uh, this and get this process into their uh, DNA, if you will. We're going to go back and, and, and catch up to where we're at because we don't ever want to lose focus on where we're at in the heart of God. So remember, this is God's vision for his kingdom. This is the heart of God. Uh, and the four fields are his strategy uh, to see his vision for his kingdom fulfilled. And remember that God is going to use abiders, which we see in John 13, 14, 15, and 16. Abiders and who? Dyers. And dyers are what? Abiders. And abiders are dyers. We see the principle of dying in John what? John 12 what? 24. And here's our little symbols of wheat. And what does that scripture say? Does anybody know? What happened? Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains how? Alone. Alone. But if, yeah, who said it? Say it again, Smiley. Brings forth much fruit. So, God is going to use abiders and dyers to fulfill his vision for his kingdom. He has entrusted us uh, greater things than he did, we will do. Amen or not? Isn't that what he said? And this is out of John, what, 14? Huh? 14, 12, okay. I'm going to trust you on it because I am wrong a lot. Here we got what? Global kingdom impact, and it's the what effect? The mustard seed effect, which means it starts off small and it grows exponentially, right? And we see this in Matthew what? 6, 9 through what? Or 9 and 10. Uh, Matthew 13, right? Matthew also 9, 37, and 38. Uh, Matthew 13 is the parable of the sower and the parable of the leaven. Uh, Matthew 9, 37, and 38, the Lord sees the world as it is. He has compassion, and his, his statement about the world is what? Harvest is plentiful, but what? Labors or workers are few, therefore we pray what? To the Lord of the harvest for what? More laborers, exactly. And then we get into the four fields, which is the strategy for God's heart. The four fields, which is the strategy, right? First field, number one is what? Reproducible entry, and we do that how? Oikos list. Oikos means what? Household. It literally means household. So this is the people closest to us that we're going to try to bring into the kingdom. We're going to make that list, that intentional list of saved and unsaved, right? How many of y'all still got your Oikos list? Now, we're getting a lot. You see how many times the gospel's being... Y'all can't see it all, can you? Let me turn it a little bit. I don't want y'all not to see it, but... And what this is, we want to just kind of keep up with how many times people are sharing three circles, and this is how many times... Uh, I hadn't put mine up there yet. Has anybody not put theirs up there yet? I know there's some people that are he that are not here that I don't see that I know has been sharing big time because I've been keeping up with it. Uh, so, has anybody shared three circles with anyone on their Oikos list yet? Just show hands. You have. All right, all right, cool. So, this is reproducible entry. 
In the next field, number two is reproducible what? Evangelism, which is what? Three circles. Now, the next field we go to is number three, which is reproducible. Anybody know? Discipleship. Which is called three-thirds. Now, this is where we're going to next, but I don't think we're ready for that. Because there's so many questions and so much discussion about this, sharing three circles. And I, I want to mix up a little Blackaby into this tonight if I can. Uh, remember, we share three circles because that's our, that's our evangelistic strategy. That's how uh, we're going to share the gospel in hopes of a response. And we do this with who? Everybody. Anybody. Everybody and anybody. Now, I brought my chicken box with me because this is the last time I shared three circles. I was up at my dad's, and we went over to a place called, uh, what is the name of that place? It's out in the middle of nowhere. It's on the other side of Delaplane. No, that's, it's not a Spanish place, Chris. Anyway, I went over to look at a, a, a drill, a grain drill. And uh, I was talking to the guy, and we was talking about the drill, from, and on and on and on. I knew on the way over there, I was looking in my truck, and I said, chicken box. Save your chicken box, people. Could come in handy. But I just emptied this one. But I knew on the way over there that I was going to share three circles with that guy, unless he was just... I picked up on it. If I mentioned Jesus, this guy's going to kill me. Uh, and I didn't pick up on that. So at the end of our conversation, uh, his name was Sean. I said, Sean, you ever seen three circles? Now, that's a kind of odd question. Have y'all got funny looks from that? Because your first response wants to be, well, hadn't everybody seen circles? You know? But Sean looked at me funny, and he said, well, I don't guess. I said, well, you got two minutes. I knew he did because we were standing in the rain. We've been standing there for 30 minutes talking about this drill that I wasn't going to buy. And uh, so he said, yeah. And I said, well, let me find something to write on. And I strategically had this laying right where I knew where it was. And so I got out my chicken box, and right there in the drizzling rain, I shared three circles with him. Now, here's what I did. Uh, when I got to the broken circle, and I started explaining how we're trying to get back to that perfect relationship with Christ. I said, we do all kinds of things. We may just try to be good. We may give. We may do religious things like baptism. Now, at the end, I asked him the question, Sean, do you understand what I just showed you? Yeah, but... I'm going to have to disagree with you on that baptism. You see, Sean was, you got it, Church of Christ. Now, what do you think I should have done there? Kept on going. Let me tell you what I did do, Miss Linda. I said, you know what, Sean? Let's scratch that off. Let's just use something else. Because I was not there to debate Sean, my Church of Christ friend, on does water baptism save? That ain't what I went there for. I went there for the drill. But I take this everywhere. So I just skipped right over that, and we started talking about everything else. And guess what? We didn't even mention baptism again. Look, it's a good idea not to debate Church of Christ folks in the rain about water baptism. Because they, they got some answers for you, so you're going to have to have your head right to get that. But I brought this, and I brought this point up just to show you, man, we're to be sowers, right? I was not there to debate him about that. Obviously, I have a total different perspective on water baptism than he does because he's Church of Christ. But I wanted to share three circles with him. Now, at the end, 
and, and Sean's a Christian. Obviously, he believed all this, except my little deal there on baptism. Uh, and not that we don't believe in baptism, because you know we do. At the end, I said, Sean, can I leave this with you to show somebody else? He said, nah. What do I do then? Well, you know what I did, because there's my chicken box. Right. Wayne? about that there you go man and that's what it's all about right sow those seeds guys now let's let's i want to introduce a little bit of what we're doing at iron man every morning we're going through experiencing god and it's amazing it's amazing how the teachings and this has been around a long time experiencing god and it's always fresh we go through this every year this is my third time going through it reed's teaching this to it this is the 11th time you guys who could come to Iron Man and ain't coming to Iron Man, this is what you're missing. I'm just telling you, you're missing something good. Now, let me share something with you that I think will help us in this. Because remember, what, what have we been saying? We sow everywhere. In, in the parable of the sower or parable of the souls, as some people say it, the sower had one job, and it was to sow. And we read the parable, and those seeds went everywhere, places that they weren't going to germinate, places that they were going to germinate, and they wasn't really going to produce a crop because they was going to die real quick. Uh, some places, they didn't sprout an inch. But then some landed on that good soil. Now watch this. This statement made in, in, in uh, Experiencing God gives the example of Jesus passing through a crowd and he always looks to where his father is at work, Jesus, when he was here on planet Earth. But listen to this next statement. The crowd was not the harvest field. The harvest field was within the crowd. Let me say that again. When Jesus went through crowds, he was always looking to where his father was working. But the... the crowd the whole crowd was not the harvest the harvest was within that crowd somewhere so when we sow and this is human nature man if we share the gospel we we really want to see some results don't we i mean we want to see someone come to christ or we want to see some movement uh what did i accomplish by showing that to sean he didn't even take the chicken box well, he's already a Christian. But isn't there something bigger? What did I accomplish? What about me, guys? I'm part of this too. I was what? I was obedient. You see that? So when I get to heaven, at least one thing... At least one thing I was obedient about. Because I knew going out there that God, I had never even met this fellow, but I knew that God wanted me to share three circles with him. And it was perfect. But the, the whole crowd's not the harvest. Well, why do we sow everywhere? Why do we, just, why do, we do that? Because we, somebody said it. We don't know where the harvest is at, do we, Kim Murphy? Do you know? I don't know. Do you know, James, when you're talking to someone about the Lord, if they're going to get you don't know, do you? But within that crowd where we harvest or where we sow, there is a harvest some where even if it isn't for me. But God knows where that harvest is at. Because there's there's certain things that only God can do. Miss Linda, can you draw anyone to Christ? No, you can't. Carla, can you? 
Larry, can you make someone seek spiritual things? We can't, can we? Only God can do that stuff. But now look. If we're always just simply watching for flashing lights and billboards and an arrow pointing over someone's head that says, this guy wants to get saved. What are we going to do, be doing most of our time? Standing around. So we sow because we understand that God's making the good soul. Right? Now, I, I say this, and I had this conversation with somebody. You know, I'm always using that example about sticking your head around the gas pump and saying, Hey, man, you want to see three circles? I don't do that. It's a good way to get shot. Okay, I don't do that. That's just kind of satire. Satire. I'm being funny. Uh, you know, some people, I won't call Reed's name, but some people will do that. Uh, you know, uh, that's, that's just how he's put together. But at the same time, we don't want to wait till God makes it so obvious that we can't miss it. Now, there's times we want to be sowers, and we want to share three circles. Now, how many, and we're all, we're all friends here. You're not going to hurt the preacher's feelings. How many of you, you're warming up to three circles, but you're just really not there yet? Let's be honest. Because, yeah, yeah. You can do it at Wrangler Camp. You can do it anywhere. Yeah, well. Well, and that's what we want because you're so familiar with the doings at Wrangler Camp. Now let's, let's see it again. How many of you are warming up to it? Just not quite there yet. Miss Linda, you've been sharing with everybody. I think you're past warm. Now, when I say warming up, I'm not talking about you're getting better and better at doing it. I'm talking about just the notion of sharing this because it seems gimmicky. Lois, you're my wife. You can't do that. But she did it. Well, just to be honest with you, when I first heard it, because I'm not a gimmicky kind of guy either, I thought, another gimmick. But, but let me show you what this does. Man, look. I want you to think about, think about, think about it. You are taking a person in two minutes from creation all the way to the cross in two minutes or less. Man, that ain't gimmicky. And, and I understand that it, you may have to warm up to it. And when I, again, when I say warm up, I'm not talking about getting good at it because this is something you can catch. Now, you will get better and better and better by doing it, obviously. But this is something that takes a person from creation to the cross in two minutes. How else can you do that? Seriously. How else can you do that? In two, two minutes. At a gas pump, standing in a guy's farm lot in the drizzling rain. What else can you do that's that impactful? So, in the beginning... God created the world, and God created the world perfect. And in this perfect world, he put a perfect man and a perfect woman. They had a perfect relationship with each other. They had a perfect relationship with God. He created them to know him, to love him, and to worship him. But something happened, and they disobeyed God, and that disobedience broke the world. We call it sin. The Bible calls it sin. And now we live in a broken world, and we all know we live in a broken world. Why? Because the world is full of things that scream we're broken. Sin. And ever since the world got broken, we've been trying to do everything we can to get back to this place. We may give. We may just try to be good. Man, we do religious stuff like going to church. 
But none of that will get you back here. And God loved this broken world so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And according to Scripture, Jesus lived a sinless life. But yet Jesus died, according to Scripture, for the sins of the world. Scripture also says there were two other men crucified that day, one on the right, which died and went to hell. The Bible says the other one went to heaven. Now, why did this man go to heaven? He wasn't a good man. He was a criminal. Matter of fact, out of his own mouth in Scripture, we see that he's a criminal. Why did he go to heaven? Because he put his faith and his trust in Jesus Christ. And according to scriptures, if we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we too can go back to that perfect relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And the two questions are, first of all, do you understand what I just showed you? It's the first question. Second question is, which circle are you in? Now, is that gimmicky? Man, I'm telling you, there's, it's powerful. It's so powerful because it takes you from creation to the fall to the redemption in two minutes. That was under two minutes probably. I didn't time myself. but Now, lots of people has been doing this, saved and unsaved, and a lot of people are confused why I put saved and unsaved. Well, that was because of the Oikos list. Now, the, uh, this next field that we're going to go into next Wednesday night, probably, if we're ready, is the discipleship field. This is what we do after we share three circles, hopefully from our Oikos list first, someone that's close to us. We share three circles. And through that reproducible evangelism, they come to know Christ. Then we begin to disciple them in such a way, watch this, where at some point they will be ready to disciple. This is God's vision for his kingdom. Guys, listen, way too long. We have come to the conclusion that the vision God has for his kingdom is for folks to come to church and sit down. That's not it. That's not it at all. It's not even close, to be honest with you. And that's why we suffer so much in, in, as, as children of God. His vision is this. It's all scriptural. And three circles. I'm just telling you, I've been around a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But when God gave whoever God give it to, this three circles, God give them something big. As simple as it is, and don't ruin it by making it difficult. They don't need to know Adam and Eve's name. They don't. They don't need to know Scripture. There, there's no Scripture in, in three circles. But everything's from Scripture, right? Matter of fact, when we get to the, uh, the third circle, I think it's important that we begin to say, and Scripture says, and Scripture says, and Scripture says. How, just, just, uh, let's just hear some testimonies. I know some of you shared three circles. You heard mine, and I don't want to put the spotlight all on me. So if, if you shared three circles this week or at any point, and it was just worth hearing, Carla, go ahead. So, Carla's making a sale from Facebook, I assume, some social media. It goes to a public location to make the sale. Starts a conversation with the person who's buying the good. Shares three circles with them. And then this happens. Makes you want to share more. Did you share more? Eight times. <laughs> Shared eight times after that. Because, first of all, it's easy, isn't it? And you see how productive it is. Now, this lady was a Christian, correct, that you shared with. Was that a win or a lose, guys? Win. 
Matter of fact, matter of fact, listen to this. It's going to sound weird. Possibly when we share with another Christian and they go and share, possibly if it's even a bigger win than when we share with the lost person. Because again, we don't know who the good soul is. And if they don't pray to receive Christ or come to Christ on the spot, we don't know. We feel good because we've sowed. We, we feel good because they've walked away possibly with the three-circle diagram that we give them. But do you think that that lady is going to mention that again to someone? Yeah. Listen, that is God's vision for his kingdom, that his children will do what Carla did right there and did it everywhere. That's just one scenario. Amen? Now this lady's interested in her church. She wants to know if she can come to uh, this church. And Carla told her, yeah, come sit with me. I'll be looking for you when you walk in. Going to come get you. Of course, the goal is not to get it. The goal is not to build a church, is it? The goal is to build the kingdom. The Lord will build the church. And we call it reproducible evangelism because she took that with her to pass on to someone else. Who else has got another story? Okay. Reproducible. What better way? Uh, Billy goes to his Gideon meeting. Gideons are all about sharing the gospel. Uh, they're the ones who give out the Bibles. Uh, and he literally teaches the whole meeting three circles, and they're going to go out and share three circles. Reproducible evangelism. Is that a win or a loss? It's always a win. There's never a loss. It's always a win-win, amen or not. Another story right quick, anybody? Radonna? You didn't use baptism, did you? Good, good move, good move. You shared it. Three women in a Bible study. Is that what you said? Eating dinner with three women. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Now, what does this call us to be? Think about it. Huh? Huh? Mission, that is, well, you are missionaries, no doubt about it. Disciples, but, huh? We're definitely being obedient. What? Well, you definitely so are intentional. Because, see, we're not intentional Christians. Think about it. Well, you know, if it happens, praise the Lord. Look, guys, the world's dying, going to hell. We need to be intentional about this. And again, I get it. Believe me, I get it. That's why I asked the question, how many of you are warming up to this? And by the way, that's why we're beating a dead horse. That's why we're staying so long on this. Because I know uh, these guys that's been in Iron Man, goes to Iron Man, they're like, I have heard this one million times. Can we please talk about something else? But, we got to be intentional. And, and I know if you've just now seen it or it may take you a while to warm up, but I'm telling you, just like Carla said, if you'll share it one time, it's like, what's, what's them tater chips you can't eat, just one of them? Lay's. Lay's ain't got nothing on three circles. I'm just telling you, if you do it one time, it will light a fire in you where you want to do it. And here's why. Here's why, guys. Because as God's children, there is an innate desire in us to be obedient. We want to be obedient. I believe that. All who really belong to Jesus really want to please the Lord. And you know what? Whether they reject it or whether they receive it or no matter what happens, just like I said about me and my chicken box, I was obedient. And that's what really matters. Miss Linda? Yeah. I think you got your terms mixed up. You're exactly right. 
uh, you're not 100% sanctified because sanctification goes on for a lifetime. Glorified and justified, yes, you got them right. You just got them flipped up. That's exactly right. But did he, did he understand that? Because most folks are not going to understand those terms, justification, glorification, sanctification, that's churchy stuff. But if you're talking to someone who understands them, bravo, you bet. He's a Mormon? Okay. Yeah. And you're going to get those questions, guys. Don't be, don't be fearful of the questions. They're going to come. And if you can't answer a question, I'm telling you, you're going to run up some, against some questions that you are not ready for. But most of the time, I've shared this a bunch, most of the time, they're going to point at one of those circles. And here's my next, if they point to that circle, my next question is this, which circle do you want to be in? I don't care why they're broken. They probably don't even know why they're broken. Which circle do you want to be in? And they point to that one most of the time. So your, your questions do matter. If they point to the broken circle, Man, I'll never ask, why do you think you're broken? I'm not going down that road with them. I, which circle do you want to be in? I want to be with Jesus. I want to be in that perfect circle. Yeah, that's right. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in a broken world, but we're no longer broken. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's exactly right. Matter of fact, Jesus actually told his disciples that. To be in the world, but not of the world. He's, he told his disciples that. So, sharing three circles. You, you, we'll never get to the reproducible discipleship part if we can't bring people in. Obviously, God brings them into the kingdom. But who's he going to do it with? Abiders. He's not going to do this with anybody else. But abiders and dyers. And listen. Listen. To share three circles, we got to die, don't we? We got to die to our fears. We got to die to intimidation. We got to die to <laughs> the rain sometimes because it was raining then. You got a shirt made? Baptist. Oh, it's from Wind Baptist. Okay. Have you, I don't think this will fit me, Kim, but anyway. Have you heard of three circles? Now, Larry, is there any power in just having something like this hanging around? Do you remember what Larry said? Every time somebody walks in his office, they look up on the wall. There it is. And they ask the question. Kim, are you, are you saying you're going to get us some shirts made? We probably want our own three trees. No, seriously. How many times have you been wearing a T-shirt that says something goofy and it started a conversation? A million times. We all have, right? So uh, you can get one of these from Wynn Baptist. It's just a witnessing tool, right? Chris, you need to get one. You're going to El Salvador Friday. You need to get one in El Salvadorian. You're taking three circles with you. Amen. This is yours, I guess, right? Yeah. Easy now. Watch it. Okay, it's time to get up. Uh, man, time just flies by, doesn't it? It just flies by. Here's what we're wanting to see, more, no, more dots on the board now. We're not going to stay on this forever. We're going to get into the discipleship part. But, guys, here's the truth of the matter. These are in order because they're in order biblically. Evangelism have to, has to take place before discipleship. Yeah. What, what do we want to see here at Three Trees? God's used us in a really mighty way in 11 years, amen or not. But when, when we know that God, see, this, we, want a, we, want a, we don't want a church that's going to pop up and we build all this stuff, and then when all of us die off, this place is a ghost town. When all of, if the Lord tarries and we're all in heaven, we want our grandchildren and other people's children doing what we did, but even better. And so what our vision is, what our vision is God's vision, is that we've got a church full of disciple makers and people that are equipped to disciple other people. 
Chris is our missions and discipleship pastor, but man, he can't disciple everybody. Besides that, if we hired somebody to do all that, what would what about us? We're being disobedient by not discipling. Enough of this come to church and sit down and go home. Man, this is just the dugout. The game's out there. That's a good analogy. Did you catch that analogy? That was right off the top of my head, man. It happens sometimes, guys. It happens sometimes. Wow. All right. Yes, smoke in here. Wow. Wow. How many? Let's, let's close on this. It's a little bit of a challenge. How many would be honest and say, Brother Tracy, man, I've gotten this close to sharing three circles. And I just went the other way. Got one back there. Go ahead. Miss Lois, you, you'll talk to anybody about anything. You just shared with a room full of Gideons, but there was an instance where, was that, just curious, you knew them, okay. Uh, you're proving this, right? Billy, Billy said it was more security there with the Gideons because he is a Gideon and he knows them. So I just knew, Lois, she was going to share three circles with that guy in the in the, in the doctor's office a while ago, and he was driving me nuts. I was like, boy, I wish she'd share three circles with him so he'd be quiet. See, there's different, different angles, Morgan. You can take, you can pray, Lord, shut him up so she can share three circles. No, I'm just carrying on. Hey, I get it, man. I get it. But I'm telling you, man, one time, you do it one time, it's going to feel so good. But you can't wait, and you become intentional. You, you, you're going to be intentional now. You already are. Billy, you're going to be unstoppable now, intentional. Miss Linda, Radonna, you're going to be telling Mike, let's go eat and share three circles. That's how good it's going to get. Amen? All right. Hey, don't forget uh, the baby bottle campaigns for Hope of the Delta. This goes right along with what's going on in America right now. Please, this week, be praying Roe v. Wade that it gets defeated. Do that. Pray, pray, pray. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Tracy Wilson. Thank you so much for being with us uh, via Facebook or YouTube or however you're watching us, whether it be a Wednesday night round pen or a Sunday morning uh, service here at the Cowboy Church. Just wanted to say hello and give you a personal invite to come and be with us here at the Cowboy Church. Uh, there's three options for you. Sunday mornings we have a 9 a.m. service, uh, and then a second service at 10.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday nights uh, we do what we call a round pin Bible study, which is just getting into the heart of God's Word and studying it for all it's worth. We would love to meet with you uh, here in person at the Cowboy Church. We're so thankful for uh, technology. We've gotten uh, comments on our uh, sermons and Bible studies uh, all the way from Africa. And so we're so thankful. But uh, we do want to invite you here with us uh, to be uh, in person, in-house at the Cowboy Church. You know, the Bible says this about salvation. The Bible says clearly in Ephesians 2.8 that salvation is by grace through faith not of works, so no man can boast. Our prayer is that through these messages and through these Bible studies, uh, that the Word of God would uh, find its place in your heart. The promise is that God's Word will not return void. So we want to make ourselves available to you uh, for anything that we can do to help you. If you have questions about this Jesus that we preach about, this Jesus that we serve, this Jesus that we know as our Savior and that the Bible declares as the only Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you would have a question about that, if we could help you with that, or if God deals with your heart through one of our sermons or Bible studies, and you've responded to that, and you've put your hope and trust, and you've committed to follow Jesus Christ, we would love to celebrate with you about that. We'd love to talk with you about that help you in any way that we can. If you're watching, then obviously you have Facebook or uh, the availability of YouTube. Uh, 
if we can do anything, I would love for you to personally message me on Facebook. And I would love to correspond with you about this. God is able, and He is able to meet all of our needs. He has extended His grace to us uh, through the offer of forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. I hope that you have taken advantage of that. I hope that you belong to Christ. And please take advantage of Three Trees Cowboy Church. Being here in person or just allowing us to message with you and help you in any way we can. Until then, until we see you in person or we see that message, God bless you and thank you for being with us.